Joyce, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's going to be a very busy week for you, so we got you right when you landed in Las Vegas. What do you think about this 20th anniversary so far? Man, I'm a product of my father's work. It's, uh, I did what I learned from him. Yeah, let's say I created Explosion <laughs> 20 years ago, helped the world find out about the art of grace jiu-jitsu. Yeah, let's talk about growing up with your dad. Um, there, you were one of nine, and your dad obviously was a, a legend, but he never forced any of you into training. He said, when they're ready, they can do it. Do you, do you feel like that's why you guys all have such a big love for jujitsu? is because it, you didn't have to do it, you did it because you loved it? Yes, and he was teaching us. Today I can see he was teaching us how to become teachers, not how to become fighters. Fighting became of a, it's a personal challenge. I want, in order for me to teach, I have to prove it to myself that this stuff really works. Let's go back to how you started in the business. Um, it's a story that us involved in the UFC and mixed martial arts really know, but, but for those who don't, can you kind of walk us through how you got to UFC 1? <laughs> Pretty simple. My brother just said, hey, I'm setting up this tournament. Would you like to be part of it, to be in it? It's uh, three fights in one night. Growing up as a Gracie, I was waiting for my chance, for my opportunity. So I jumped right in, sure, let's do it. Do you remember what that feeling was like when, when he asked you? I am pretty, let's say, cold when it comes to feelings like this. It's a, I wanna do it, it's my job, give me a chance, please. But it's not, it's like celebrating. I'm against celebration, let's celebrate the win. It's my job to win the fight. So I'm getting paid to win. And when you did at UFC 1, I mean, three fights in one night. After that night, did you really know that the UFC was going to be something special? I knew the UFC was going to be something special before even the UFC happened. It's the world wants to see who is the best fighter. There's always that interest. So everybody's always interested in, okay, who would win a fight? between Bruce Lee and Muhammad Ali. If they put both of them in the prime time, Mike Tyson and Bruce Lee, who would win a fight? You see, people have that kind of curiosity. So, yeah, we knew it. A fight that a lot of people called for was you versus Mike Tyson. Was that something that I thought you ever entertained? Was that something that ever went through your mind? Like, hey, I'll, I'll do that. Yes, we'd, uh, we actually put up a challenge to him back then, I heard he accepted, his camp did not, because if he loses, he was in the prime of his life, and if he loses, it would have destroyed boxing. So, but we invited him over, the, his lawyers, his people said, nope, forget it. <laughs> how, do you, how do you see that fight unfolding if it would have happened? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> hey, <Mike's laughs> I did not want to get hit by him. <laughs> it would take one punch, it would, I would be out. <laughs> but if you punch my shoulder, my arm would probably fall off. <laughs> I mean, Mike's around now. Do you ever get to talk to him? Or do you guys ever talk about like, hey, what if we would have we fought? Oh, those, I met him not too long ago at the UFC. And I had my kids with him. He told my kids, man, your father is the best fighter. My kids look up to him. It's like, wow, Mike Tyson is saying that you're the best fighter ever. It's like, that was awesome. Um, somebody that's quickly risen to the ranks, and I'm sure you have kept your eye on, is Ronda Rousey. Uh, and there have been some comparisons to her career path and your career path, not only the submission strengths, but, you know, the undefeated. She's got a great uh, nemesis in Misha Tate, as you did with Shamrock. Um, do, you, do you look at her and see reflections of your career? Yes, she's very good. And she sticks to her game. She's a grappler. She's a judo player. So she doesn't play around trying to box with the opponent. She comes in, she does what she knows best. So that's what I did when I was fighting. Yes, I learned other styles for me to know what's coming at me. Not because I'm gonna use, I'm gonna box. She learned box, I can see she, she's been practicing, but she doesn't stand there and okay, let's, I'm gonna knock you out. No, she comes in, take the opponent down and go for the finish for the submission. Do you feel like her pressures now are, are some pressures that you may have faced early on? Yes, but the pressure, it's, it's something that she has to take care of it. She can ignore it and just be herself, or she can let that get into her head. I didn't let it get into my head. 
What do you think would be harder? You know, what you had three or four fights in one night or one training camp where you're cutting a lot of weight and preparing for just one specific opponent? I, I don't need to cut weight. I never cut weight. But fighting an open weight, I mean, you need time if you find somebody bigger and stronger. You can't put time limit. And if you put time limit in most of my fights against Dan Severn and Ken Shamrock, and they would have won. Without the time limit, I finished them. So it's a, without the time limit, it's hard. But again, fighting somebody bigger, no time limit, no gloves, no rules. And then you have to come back and fight three more fights after that one, four fights in one night. And you don't know who is on there. So you got to be ready for everybody. So you got to train for a sumo wrestler and you got to train for a karate guy and a kickboxer and a wrestler. So you got to train for everybody. So it makes it much harder. What do you think about guys now who they know they have a 15 or 25 minute fight and you see their cardio start to fail? Is that something that bugs you as, as a guy who had to fight literally all night? I mean, yes, it does. It's a profession. It's your job to be in shape. It's your job to show up at that weight division. If you can't make weight and you show up and you get tired during the fight, one time, okay, it's understandable. Something happens, something's wrong, you're not on your day. But if it happened two, three times, it's your job. You have to be in shape. Something either you're doing wrong or you're something that you're not doing. Yes, it does bother me. What about the growth of the UFC? Is it cool for you to, see, to go to these other countries where you don't share the same language or you may not share the same customs, but you all understand and love the same sport? Kids all over the world are growing up now. The new generation is training to like baseball. One day I want to be a professional baseball player. One day I want to be a professional soccer, football player. One day I want to be a UFC fighter. Now you know that this it, it made it, it made it. When little kids, it's like, wow, man, one day I want to be a UFC fighter, man. Can you hook me up? How old are you again? 10 years old? Yeah, when I, can, can you let me fight one day for the UFC? Sure, look me up about 20 years from now. <laughs> 10 years from now, look me up. <laughs>